Okay, now that the 63 AC30, the first of the JMI is in, is pretty stable uh, as far as the normal non-top boosted brilliant channel and vibrato channel are concerned, it's time to put the top boost card on, right? This is not a uh, an original one. This is a later kit version. So I just slap this in there and call it an app, right? I don't think so. This thing has been done so so extremely poorly. It's just got all kinds of problems. First of all, this is like 20 gauge or 18 gauge solid core wire for the heaters. And that's a lot of strain on those pins unnecessarily because you don't need to have this much mass. Second of all, those heaters are running parallel to this input wire. This is the input from the previous stage in the circuit. It's in parallel with that. That's all got to go. And uh, some general ugly stuff as well. This is all going to be gutted and rebuilt. One of the first things I'm going to have to decide, uh, given that you don't have much room to reach in here, which uh, physically cramped space once it's assembled, I'm going to try to pre-assemble, pre-wire a lot of stuff with the socket out and then put the socket in place. I'm not quite sure of the utility of having a bayonet base tube shield on this. I don't th think that the shield offers any real advantage. I may replace this top mount with a shield with a bottom mount with no tube shield just to be able to wire it a bit better because I could do a lot more of the pre-wiring. I'll jump off that bridge when I come to it. Let me uh, start getting things disconnected so that I have a better game plan going forward. So I'm just going to start uh, with this solder to flow. The yucky solder that the guy used, he used throughout. So all these connections here will get tinned as I go. So I can't do all this removal work on camera. So through the magic of editing, Okay, it's all taken apart, and uh, I can reuse this belt and socket. It's a good quality belt and socket. What I want to point out, though, here, if I can get the camera to focus on it, there's some good... This solder that they used before has no flux. Nothing was really adhering to the metal, and all the uh, joints were gray and grainy and yucky. So I'm going to get all that off and start fresh and tin everything with some leaded stuff first. All right. All the yuck off, everything tinned, and all excess solder from the tinning removed. And these are clean and ready to re receive solder. Now, a decision I need to make. Let's see if I can show this the easy way. This was in here like this before. So pins four and five were here, and pin nine was here. Uh, I need to check vis-a-vis vis-a-vis -vis, um, the mounting of the terminal strip. But I think it'd be better in a lot of ways if I were to mount it like this so that there's a gap here and I can run the heaters through the center and get them farther away from the grid, grids on both sides. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, and the, the other thing I realized uh, is that I can mount just this screw here that I'm tapping next to um, to get all the wiring done here and then I can install the terminal strip which is held in place like so and that'll be the second screw that holds that in place and I need to make some do some planning here I've got two cathode cathodes I've got this which is that chassis which will be connected to chassis when this screw is in place but I don't want to use it for grounding necessarily. So this and this will both be ground. And then I've got um, an HT feed coming from the power supply of the amp. Uh, and it needs a filter cap. So um, I think I'm going to have to move the 10K dropping resistor uh, for that down to the output uh, power section of the chassis and then uh, either mount the filter cap for that at that node 
or I can do the filter cap here. Either one, one will work just fine. It doesn't really matter so much. I think I'll probably mount it here because I've got a nice radial for it and there's going to be plenty of room. Then I can have the filter ground for that node grounded with everything else. So I will have a uh, 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 ground here and a ground here, which are both chassis connections. Uh, I mean, not chassis connections, cathode connections. Uh, one, for, Actually, no, what I need to do is I need to have one. Sorry, I'm talking out loud. So this will be my cathode connection for everything in here, or this will be. And that will be going to ground, which will be tied into the existing preamp ground in the app. And then I will have a... Uh, a junction point for the uh, uh, cathode of the second stage, which will be the tone stack here, and I can have all that stuff connected right here. And then I'll run to the the hundred uh, the 56K to that cathode. Then I'll have an HT connection here where the uh, filter cap will be, which goes to uh, pin 2, and then 100K from there to pin uh, I'm sorry, goes pin one and then 100k to pin six. You know, I'm talking out loud, just trying to figure out how I'm going to do everything neatly with just four terminals. A lot of a lot of amps would have just used this as ground, but then there'd be two paths to ground, um, both the ground wire to the preamp and this chassis connection. Or you could do without the grounded wire, but then you're relying on this little bitty bit of metal to make good contact, and I just don't trust that. So. This will not be used for anything in this bit of circuit. Let me get started on the uh, remounting of the and rewiring of this first. Uh, it doesn't look like all that big a deal, but doing the heaters like this let get me, let, uh, lets me get them well away from any of the grid connections and steer them. And uh, these will tie into the. Uh, Existing heaters, the actual run will probably be about this long. I gave myself some extra because wire is cheap and 63 AC 30s are not. So time to repopulate this for all the stuff that will connect to the terminal strip, which will be held in place here. But I went ahead and put this nut on temporarily just so I knew that this whole thing would be solid to, to solder to and, and make my plans with. Doesn't look that impressive yet, but this will actually be very solid once once I get to the final steps in this whole process. All right. Now this is very neat and very secure. And uh, the capacitors are on top of other things. So in 15 years or so, when those need to be changed, they're easily done, and the others can probably be left in place. Maybe over time, those two carbon comps might have some issues. Those are in two spots where they actually contribute to the sound, in my opinion, in testing. Coming out from the side here, I've got the ground wire, the heater connections, and the red wire, which will go to the power section where it drives. I'll give that a 10K dropper there, but have the filtering here. And uh, this yellow wire here coming out is actually the input, and that is not a long shielded wire going to the rest of the amp for reasons that will soon become apparent. Okay, here we go. Uh, talked to the owner, and I was telling him how cool the non top boosted brilliant channel can sound in these, and he was very intrigued, and he asked, is there a way to switch between top boost and non-top boost? So I got this really nice quality CTS push-pull switch pot, which will allow me to do that. Now it's a little bit of a workaround in that, uh, I mean, it's a little bit of a fudge in that the actual JMI non-top boost uh, brilliant channel does not have a 100 pike fair bright cap and the top boost does. And without doing relays or really long wires and a complicated switch, uh, there's no way to, uh, let me get that bent a little bit better. There's no way to, to take the bright cap out when it's not being used. So the bright cap will always be there and that's a pretty acceptable trade-off. And I'm gonna wire it so when it's in, the top boost is in circuit because you have better control of turning it. And when it's pulled out, top boost is out of circuit. That way if you pull it out and you turn the knob in the same, process, you're not making the treble change. This is going to be mounted 
like this when it's actually in place. But I've got to do the switch wiring first. And it's really high quality uh, uh, switch built into a really nice pot. But uh, it is a little bit close quarters. So I'm going to do this before I turn it. And I want to wire it so that the grid of this tube stage is grounded out when it's not used. Otherwise, that tube will bias oddly and we could have a shortened tube life, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, this will be the feed to the tube. So that'll be one of these connections, and it'll probably be one, it'll be one of these three because it'll be closer physically. And then I'll have the base pot. The other consideration is, uh, let me get this to focus so it just stops changing where it's looking at. There you go. The uh, wiring for the top boost on the JMIs is kind of backwards compared to how they are in the TBX in most copies. And uh, the way this tone stack was wired to begin with. And I'm about to call the owner before I do this because while the JMI uh, wiring is period correct, it has very narrow sweet spots compared to the, uh, let's call it the modern or improved way to wire it. It's just a matter of um, which side of the base and treble pots are wired which way. They kind of work backwards from each other. And given that these are audio taper pots, uh, I think that Korg made the right decision changing the way that was wired on the TBX and on the Excalibur with Top Boost. I'm doing it that way because it is, um, you can get the exact same sounds you get with the JMI. You just have a much narrow, uh, wider uh, sweet spot. The window of usable sounds is greater. But I'm going to call the owner real quick and see if he wants it done the JMI way just to have it as if it were a 63 from the factory with add-on top boost. So stay tuned for that. Well, the owner chose, quite correctly, I think, to go with the modern wiring like you'd find in a TBX, which does give a lot uh, nicer, in general, uh, margins of adjustment. And I've got everything built here just so, without any stress on anything, but without any ex uh, super extraneous slack like that's not a straight line to there. It's got a little bit of a curve built in. I've got um, insulation, the Teflon insulation I stripped for some wires to keep everything just pretty as it should be. Everything's very secure and now I need to very carefully thread the needle and get my uh, to and from uh, shielded wires in place. Okay, now we're going to be in business. Get this good shielded wire, some heat shrink to both to keep the, any little bits of insulation from going where they should not and to keep them together and provide some common strain relief. And this will go to the circuit. I got some excess here. Again, wire is inexpensive. 63 AC30s are not. And this will be a very secure thing. And the uh, signal wires to and from the circuit will be very, very distant from the heater wires. And uh, it's a little bit hard to see there, but those are secure connections. Um, this stuff, um, this wire that I like to use, this cable, doesn't have that tiny little center conductor that a lot of insulated cables have, so it's not going to snap off. I mean, if you really yanked at it, it might, but in practice, this, <coughs> pardon me, gives very reliable connections, and that's good. We like reliable around here. So tomorrow, I will put this in the app and see if the magic smoke comes out. I doubt it. And again, for the owner, uh, in on the treble pot, top boost circuit engaged, pull out, it'll bypass it. And it'll have knobs that match the rest, I just haven't put them on yet.